<laughs> we won't be long. So don't do anything erratic. How <laughs> <laughs> are we looking? I know you're looking at the We're looking live, we're just double checking. Is anyone there? Can anyone see us? Comments? This is our first oh, yeah. time, by the way. <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm just, we're, we're just going to roll into it. Welcome to the Melbourne 4x4 show. Now, typically every year, uh, we get the camera crew down here, we do a big walk around, we launch it to YouTube. We thought this year, we'll do something completely different and we'll show everybody firsthand, yeah. unscripted, which might go bad. <laughs> it, it, it could go bad. Yeah. <laughs> but we kept Michael. We kept Michael sober last night, so it should be. All right. I'm not an alcoholic, guys. <laughs> he reckons I'm, I'm picking on him. Save so, Melbourne four x four show. This is the biggest show for Patriot campers of the year, every year. Yes. And besides Brisbane, which is our home show, it just kind of works out every year for some reason. Uh, timing, I think, because Brisbane's so close after Christmas that this is where we always launch all the new products. So it. It, it always and it's never. It's never actually really been planned for the Melbourne 4x4 show. It's not like we've said, we're going to build this truck for the Melbourne 4x4. It's just every year it kind of happens. Mm -hmm. So last year we brought down the Super Ram, uh, which was the first heavily modified 2500 Ram. Year before that, we brought down the Mega 6, and then prior years, the black truck's been down here. This year we got a couple of brand new products like we do every year. Yes. But we're, I think, pretty exciting. We're launching the new X1N at the Melbourne 4x4. So what I'm going to do, because... I know that most people are going to tune in to have a look at this, yeah? So I'm going to tease it and I'm going to leave that to the end. So what we're going to do first, um, crowd's going to start rolling through. I think if everybody kind of mans their stations, let's go one by one through all the products. This could be a long video too. So if you're at work, put your earphones <laughs> in so your boss doesn't tell you to turn it off. This is important. This is more important than anything you've got going on at your desk today. And if you don't get down here to see it, well, here is the perfect walk around. Okay? We ready to go? Let's do it. Tommy, I reckon you're up. <laughs> Into it, Tommy. Let's go. Let's, let's go to the staple. Let's go, let's go and have a look at the X1. Yeah? What do we want to look at? Um, I think we start with the X1. Let's have a look okay. at the X1 let's and maybe have a look here. at... Maybe have a look at with the X1. And guys, um, in the comments, if you start, if we start losing audio or something like that, if we're too far away, let us know. Um, again, this is this is our first YouTube live, yep. so it might work. It might. Oh, comment, comments. Awesome. So I'll keep the comments going. Okay. Um, let's go down the X1, and maybe you start walking around the X1, and Absolutely. and I'll read the comments. So if you got any comments, for Tommy, especially about his haircut, because this is. He's all man. This is, I'm all man. This, okay. He's definitely got the best. He won the best hair competition yesterday on That's Instagram. It. That's and it. And he's looking good. Thanks. So, mate, you take over and I'll, um, and I'll read through the comments. Okay, so I suppose look, uh, looking at the X1, you know, this is, you know, this is the, the, the model that, you know, everyone goes for. This is the family camper. This is the one, you know, that allows up to six people to sleep in it, you know. Um, it's giving you plenty of storage. It's giving you the biggest water capacity we do. So 155 litres with 235 amp hour gel batteries. It's really gonna make you go off the grid for long periods of time. It's the ultimate in touring. You know, setting up, you know, everyone sort of asked me, you know, Tommy, what's it, how long does it take to set up an X1 with the kids room, with the awning? Realistically, you're probably in the, you know, for, for beginners, you're in the sort of 10 to 15 minutes, you know? And that's not rushing, you know? That's one person doing it as well. While the other person's looking after the kids, maybe getting some dinner sorted, you know, that's what it's all about. So. You know, that, that's our main thing, but the, the kitchen is the big focus for a lot of people. And this is what sells a lot of people into our campus because of how, how it's spaced out. You know, you've got your cooking there, you've got good prep sp spaces, you've got all your drawers that pull out, um, you've got plenty of, sp you know, you've got a nice large sink to wash your dishes in, um, you've got somewhere to put your plates, somewhere to put your cutlery, um, you've got it all. Um, 50 litre fridge on this one today, uh, but you can get a 60 litre Evercool. Um, as well, so that's a dual zone, which is a very popular fridge of ours. You know, rather than opening like that. Yeah, someone's just actually Tom. Someone's just asked, show us the new ground mats. Good pickup, because this is a brand new product. It is brand new product. Where can you get them? You can get them from Patriot Supply, <laughs> uh, PatriotSupply.com.au. Awesome. Um, and then we actually do. They come in a set of two, so it goes down the back to this to this door here. So. You're covering this box and you're really going to stop a lot of that sand and dirt getting into the tent. So they're really good purchase, definitely recommended. We got uh, Al's just come on. TKM Adventures, Al, what's up brother? How you going man? 
Um, good to see that you've tuned in. He's just made a good point. You can use the sink in three sides. You can, absolutely. There's, you know, it's not, you're not in your, little, in your little sales okay. spill. No, sink, don't. three sides, Al. Legend, brother. Thanks, Al. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on, man. Um, what else? What else have we got here? A couple of questions. Um, Does everyone like the haircut? Yeah, they do. The, okay, somebody good. actually said, "What? how much does a haircut like that cost? Look, $45, <laughs> and that actually includes a shampoo and a wash and a head massage. So, you know, I can't plug the person who's doing it. But, you know, it's personal hairdresser, so I don't want them getting mobbed. All right? <laughs> That's awesome. Let's go around the back. Let's have a look at the tent. Okay, so... Yeah, and this is what a lot of people are after. They're after this sort of space, you know. You come inside, and look what you got. You got a large, you know, look, not quite a king, bigger than a queen. You can get four people up there, no problem at all. This actually folds away during the day, so you have access to all of this underneath, okay? So it's somewhere to get your clothes out of. You've got a thousand watt inverter on this one here. Um, and you've got more space there. So this one's obviously, this one's got the tech pack this and one's the tech lifestyle pack. pack. And lifestyle pack, So yeah. this is the full fruit X1 setup. That's right. So then you've got a nice space here. Look, two bunks in there, comfortably get your kids in there. Or you can stack them on top of each other. So you can get four kids in there. But that's not limited to just there. You can actually get a, another child here or someone under this this space just here. So, you know, it's, it's endless. It's only as far as your imagination will go. The greatest thing about this tent as well, the floors unzip okay so if you have been camping in really sandy muddy conditions you can unzip the floor shake it out zip it back on or you can just throw it in the wet storage boxes they actually fit in these wet storage boxes here yeah. and here so when you get home hose them off and then you can zip it on again um, and that's you know they're, they're really handy for doing that uh, a good question here is it big enough for two adults and five little uh, kitties and which camper would suit me best I think that's a no-brainer no, but exactly the one we're showing you here, okay? So you get the two adults up the top, and then obviously in here, like I said, depends how big the kids are. You know, some people do go for a large blow-up mattress in there, or a couple of those inflatable mattresses uh, in there to create the bed in there. Then all you need is a sleeping bag for each and a pillow, and you're done, and that'll fit you perfectly. Awesome, let's move on. Um, another good question, what hitch do they have? Come with me, oh, before we get question. into the hitch. Good question. Um, and that's, I reckon that definitely comes from an American and you know what, I just, hey, come here, we're live on YouTube, get in here. Someone just asked the question and I'm sure it's from the US and this is obviously unstaged. This is Andrew from Cruise Master. So these guys here produce all the suspension kits and the hitches that we run on all Patriot Campers models. Yeah. This guy from the US, what type of hitch does it have? So here's yeah. your time to shine. Here's my time to shine. Like, Let's talk about it like no one knows what it yeah. is. So this is our DO35. It's on like lots of forest, yeah. yeah. Need, need all the talent around here. So um, normal ball coupling doesn't have a lot of articulation. The DO35 um, rotates 360 degrees axially, so the, the trailer can pretty much go all round and round. Articulates there. Instead of a ball, we have a tow pin. So it, um, it is easily aligns off-road. There we go. There's one the we pin. prepared earlier. So if you if you don't know, the, yep. Like this just drops in and straightens itself up with the weight of the ball. Hit the button. And then that's that's locked. the lock. So we've got a dust cap that goes on the top. It also acts as a um, secondary um, indicator that the mechanism's closed because it doesn't go on. Yeah. So someone actually so. just asked, do they have a dust shield? Yeah. So yeah. yes, they do. That's what it don't. It doesn't require it because, um, in terms of its its workings, it will handle dust and mud and all that type of rubbish. That's how we test it, but it does allow you to make sure it's all locked. Um, it's all um, it's all designed in Australia. This is actually our third generation. I think you've been using them Forever. from the beginning. Yep. So they're um, and they just they just get better and better. Bit of gear. But I think one of the biggest things for me um, with the DO35, and I've done it twice now. I know firsthand. I've I've rolled two X1s now. The first one, actually I wasn't driving the first one, my brother rolled it like seven times. The second one I rolled it I think six times and it spun on the hitch. But what the DO35 does, obviously with that full articulation, it ensures, and especially with a bigger trailer, if you're towing say a caravan, if you do lose the trailer, it's not gonna pull your car over with it. So you imagine like a 50 mil ball or other styles of hitches, when you've got that inertia, that sort of momentum, even with a one ton trailer, and that, the trailer gets to a point on the ball where it hooks up on the ball, that weight's taking you over, you're going. 
with the DA35, and, and a lot of guys in the US do do pull me up on that. You know, and you see people kind of ticking. They're like, if I rolled my trailer, my car's not going to go. And yeah. yes, I know firsthand. I've done it. Yeah. You know. So DA35, that is the only hitch that we use, the only hitch that we would ever use. And you heard it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. How was that the time? You got a knack, nice one. You got a knack for that, eh? Um, let's have a quick uh, walk around the X1H. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So I suppose the biggest thing with the X1H, and we'll sort of cut, pan back to this, is the hard shell. Okay. The hexacore um, rooftop, and it's got the inbuilt solar panel. Okay. So that's going to trickle charge your batteries you know, during the day. Obviously, you know, it's in its limited position, so you can actually put in another solar panel or blanket um, to, on the other side, so you can catch the morning sun and then the afternoon sun. So you're gonna trickle charge your batteries pretty much all the time. Um, the best thing, obviously, about the X1H is, you know, having that hard shell has a insulate inside, so you're gonna find it's a little bit cooler inside um, and you're gonna find everything's, you know, a little bit warmer as well in the winter time. Teamed with your diesel hot water system that we do, the Wabasto, that is a very cozy tent, especially here in Melbourne. It's you need probably it the Melbourne. biggest option I'd go Pump for. Pump the heater up in there. Let's show them inside the tent. Um, Tom, what's, what's, why would you buy an X1H over a standard X1? Who's, who is this perfectly suited for? Okay, so the X1H is perfectly suited for, you know, the mum and dad where the children are no longer with them or they're using a different setup. So if the kids are starting to get into their own tents or swags, yep. Yep. That's, who, that's who they are. Right up until you, you know, the people are retired and they, you know, they want to no hassle, get in quickly. You know, you can set this up in like three minutes. Yep. You know, with your awning out, all done. It's designed for those, those trips. Look, there's one part about going camping and staying at a destination for five or six days. But typically speaking, in Australia and even in the US, you got to get there. When you're spending four, five, six days on the road, it gets monotonous setting up and packing up every day. So that's where this has come from, ultra fast setup. A couple of comments here, show us the 79. If you missed the start of the video, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting so there. We're, gonna do, we're just going to walk through the camper trailers first at the end of the day. This is the Patriot Campers channel. And then we'll get to the trucks. We'll get to the cool stuff very, very shortly. I just want to add as well, it does come with a change room that sort of totally encloses this. So when you do pull up somewhere and you're going to be okay, we're here for a couple of days, you can set that change room up and give you a lot more privacy. But otherwise, this screen comes down and it secures you nice up in there. It's a really, really nice thing. I mean, Justin, we, we slept in it throughout the Simpsons. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's such a night. You slept over the twins, didn't you? Yeah, me and the twins. The whole, the whole trip the whole across trip. the Simpsons. So we did, what, 12 days, 14 days? Yeah. And me, Christian, Ashton up in, up in that bed like not, a, not a drama. It's, it is ridiculous how spacious it is up in there. Let's, um, let's go because another, another really good question just come up. Does the X1N come with the Manager 30? Yes, it does. But before we get over to that, Let's quickly run through the TVMS, the yep. Red Arc system that yep. comes with the tech pack in these we'll two models. We'll do it on this one because the TV's on there. Yep. It's a little bit brighter up here. So the Red Arc TVMS, okay? So behind that is the Manager 30, okay? So this is your sort of face panel. Now, Red Vision, you can actually download an app, so you can operate all of this off your phone, okay? So if you're up in bed and you want to turn some lights on, or you're sitting around the campfire and you want to turn the lights on for the kids or whatever, you can do that with this, so everything's on there. You know, you just press a button, um, you see your water level gauges as well, see what your batteries are doing. Um, it's all in one position, so there's no rocker switches. And when we go to the next one end, I'll show you what it looks like when you don't have that. Um, and then, obviously, this is obviously standing out. They're pretty cool, like yeah. the airbag man. Airbag man. So with the tech pack, uh, you get airbag suspension as well. So the, air, the purpose of the airbags is two reasons. You can level uh, the trailer individually side by uh, side to side when you're at camp, but also with loading as well. So depending on what gear that you're taking, you can adjust that suspension mm. level. And you know what? <laughs> you're not going to believe this. Have a look over there. Oh, you can't, you can't miss <laughs> this. Hey, get in here. We're live on YouTube. <laughs> this is this is we what's good about it. the Melbourne Four by Four. There you go. Airbags. So if you want to know about airbags, Airbag Man are the systems that we use right across all of our trailers. Obviously, you guys have got a good relationship with Cruise Master as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely, big time. I think even a better relationship with us. Oh, I think so. We had, a few, <laughs> we had a few Guinnesses at the pub last night. It was, it was going to get rowdy. Well, I think we were close, eh? Hey? Yeah. But yeah. we decided not to. About 10 of Run us through the airbags. I think I've yep. spoken about it on other videos. What's unique about the airbag systems in yep. the Patriots? Yeah, so the Patriot Campers obviously uses the Cruise Master suspension. Um, with 
accompanied by our airbags there. So this one's full air, um, yep. so you can get full adjustability out of the camper trailer there. You can level it out on uneven camp yep. campsites and stuff like that. Yep. Um, and yeah, you got the, the handy little switches there. Let's talk the about roll, well. roll sleeve bags versus yeah. conventional bags. Like the double convolute ones? Yep. Yeah, so you use the rolling sleeve ones for more travel. Do you want to try um, and get under there while, while he's talking? Yeah, let's, so, tr let's try and get under there and have a look at the. We'll show you the system. We got. Yeah, so wherever we can, lights. wherever we can use a rolling sleeve bag, we'll, we'll use a rolling sleeve bag. Um, you can use the double convoluted ones. We Tom, use you those. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, we use those more so in the um, the leaf sprung um, helper vehicles, but the rolling sleeve more travel. Um, really good spring rate, um, ride quality, and um, yeah, you can adjust them by the switches, or you can have auto leveling, um, that type of stuff. So. Yeah, good bit of kit under here. You can see the bag going up and down there. Watch your head. That's it. Cool. Yeah, All right, easy. let's yeah. move on. X1N. Thanks, dude. Right All right, dude. Have, have a good show, brother. Yeah, you too, yeah? man. Um, Jacob, Ben from Airbag Man. These guys are they are unbelievable. Like one of those suppliers that, again, when we come up with new ideas. Yeah. They all work with us. You know, the X-Cruise suspension underneath all the Patriot campers was developed by these guys, obviously with Cruise Master, in conjunction with the engineering team at Patriot campers, and we create products specifically for our trailers. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing. I've got to say, though, what I, what I like about the airbags is, yeah. is how they travel on those harder roads. Yep. Like, way, like, the coils that look, they're great and they're robust and they're, you know, there's nothing really to go wrong with them, but when your camper is sitting behind you on corrugated roads, the airbags, it makes it sort of float, you know, a lot more. And here's another thing. I have never, ever, hand on heart, ever, in the six years of Patriot Campers now, I've never blown an airbag. I've no. never torn one. I've never blown one. I've never replaced one. Up until probably this year, I've always taken a spare airbag with me yeah. and never used it. You it's out of the toolkit now. No. So you just don't need it. Reliability, they're yeah. unbelievable. They're okay, now... That's the stuff that I think a lot of uh, people who know Patriot Campers already know about us. Let's go and have a look at our brand new model, or a brand new variation of model, the new X1N. X1N. Come and check this thing out. It is badass. I love it. Absolutely love it. I think, uh, first off, I think the Sandy Torque, you know, I think really, that's, that's the gun. You know, that's, that's what sort of set it off. Oh, mate, it's, it's, I'm, I want to see the comments. Guys, love it, hate it, dislike it. Do you think we've lost the, lost the plot? <laughs> um, give us some comments. What are your thoughts on the styling of the Desert Ops? So I might take, take a little bit of control here and just say where this all came from. So originally back when we first started Patriot Campers, Patriot Campers, the X1, had uh, a pair of roof racks on top, which we manufactured in-house, and we gave customers the options to put on whatever tent they wanted. Now, me back in the day, you remember, it was all about James yeah. Baroud. Yeah. Yeah? So I've designed this trailer specifically for a James Baroud. But then as we started coming into the market and as we started selling trailers, it was just, it, it was overwhelming the amount of people that wanted canvas. They yeah. wanted a, a king size bed. They wanted a kid's room and all the rest of it. So over the years, it kind of evolved that we really stopped selling hard shell tents. Mm -hmm. And a lot, th we were probably at the forefront of it then. James Baroud was the only hard shell tent that was yeah, on the market yeah, back then. Yeah. And again, I'm going back six years. So we kind of we kind of fizzled out the, the option to put on whatever tent you wanted because the majority of our sales were the, was the full canvas setup. I think realistically when we entered into the United States is where the thought process started changing back to, because the United States is still in their infancy of, of overlanding and that's no disrespect whatsoever because that market is going to be huge and hence the reason we put so much work yeah. into it. We love being over there but hard shell tents like uh, yeah, Alu caps, which we've got one on the, the black truck over there, really, really popular thing. So we wanted to give the X1 an option to put on a full size hard shell tent and that's where the X1Ns come from. Yeah. The whole styling behind the Desert Ops, it's kind of a celebration of, look, it's only six years ago, but it feels like 20 years yeah, Patriots yeah. been around, doesn't it? Like, yeah. It feels like forever. So we thought, we'll take it back, we'll offer something retro. This is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm just I'm just yeah. wrapped with the um, with the paint yeah. scheme. Everybody's saying they love it. Good. Versatility is appealing. Yeah. Looks good. Is iCamper an Australian or US product? We're actually uh, distributing iCamper now. So iCamper, here's a funny story. I brought in the first iCamper into Australia in 2000, 2015. I still have it. 
Matty, who runs our Super Tourist Department, it sits on the top of his 100 series, right? In 2015, when I brought it in, I'll be honest, that it wasn't up to spec. No. I, I wasn't happy with the quality of it, and we never put them onto our camper trailers. I can't have done the same thing over the years. They've evolved. The product is awesome. As far as rooftop <laughs> tents go, hard shell tents, I'm still a massive fan of, of James Baroud's. But the new Sky Camp, which is, look, very similar to an X1H as far as design goes, the Sky Camp is awesome. This thing is amazing. <laughs> This is actually my trailer, and I'm leaving that tent on the trailer. The twins are into their mountain biking now, yeah. so we can now offer an X1 that can take mountain bikes or kayaks or whatever on top. So, yeah, right. yeah. good question. And yes, iCamper is now available through Patriot Campers HQ. Um, so, X Cover and Sky Camp 4 are the yeah. two models that we're doing of iCamper, as well as we do a Darchi 1.8 meter tent with a multi room nice. underneath, so you can option that on. You can option a TJM Yulara, which is your conventional sort of 1.4 metre rooftop tent, and then obviously James Baroud. You know, James Baroud's still my favourite. It's my personal favourite. Yeah. Um, so that's that's that probably answers that. Another thing with the X1N, um, <coughs> actually, Tom, you can take over. Specs for the X1N. So what's different to an X1? Yeah, okay, so, so the big thing with the X1N is, is that, yeah, it doesn't come with the tent, okay? It comes with the, the uh, crossbar system that Patriot developed. Um, you still get the 270 degree awning, okay, so you're still getting that. Um, you're still getting very, the same sort of layout as you get with all, the, all of our X1s. But the biggest, I'll difference, the, while you okay. the biggest difference is we haven't gone for you know, all, the, all the flashy bits, you know. We've gone for you know, just your 1230 BMS because realistically that's, you know, it's a good system. Um, but what you can do with all this is it, you know, you, you get the airbag suspension as standard. Standard, okay. Yeah. With a 350 watt inverter as well as standard. So and there's your manager 30 that we're talking about. So we've done a specific electrical option pack just for the end. And to be perfectly honest with you, that was to keep the price point under 40,000 Australian dollars. Yeah. So we wanted to get, we brought this thing in at 39,990. The Desert Ops is 49,990 yeah. because of the big brakes and the 35 inch tires and the decals that all cost yeah. money so airbag standard manager 30 as standard 350 watt inverter yep. and we've gone back to the original sort of toggle switches um which you can see here yeah uh, it's, in, it's in service mode oh, no. yeah. We're off. kitchen layout is all the same um let's quickly um, maybe touch on the roof rack, okay yeah okay so the roof rack system on here um, you know, it's designed to fit anything that would pretty much fit your aero bars. Okay, so you can, you can, like, we can see here they've just got your normal brackets under there. Um, but you can do anything that sort of has that clamping system, it will work, work with. So, but what I like about this one is, you know, if you're just going away with the weekend with the boys, throw, everyone throws, throws the swags on, you've got base camp, you know, yeah, a hunting trip would be awesome with this. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah like, just fill it with swags back, yeah. back how we used to do it. And, and just um, roll around. A couple of questions. What's the tear weight? This thing here, as you see it, without the rooftop tent on, 830 kilos. So you're talking, let's call it 1,700 pounds. Yeah, my math might be a little bit off there, but about 1,700 pounds. American, good. Yeah. <laughs> X1N, we're 1,040 now. Yeah. On yeah. an X1N. And nine. So 1,040, you're talking 2,200 pounds, and that's pretty much the same for an X1. So you can pull this thing behind anything. anything. Your FJ Cruisers, you know, yet and I'm not picking on FJ Cruisers, I dig FJ Cruisers, but a lot of our customers. Are a lot of our customers, even for your Jeeps, you know, your standard sort of petrol Jeeps and FJs are a little bit underpowered for towing, but pulling behind this, absolutely not a drama. Um, when are we going to build a Super Troopy? That's a bit random. What's a Super Troopy? Respond to that. And there's another comment in here. We need microphones, guys. I said at the start of the video, we are running an external mic off the iPhone. You should it, just get a bit closer yeah, like this. Just let us know. Let okay, us know in the that, comments if that? we need to get a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah? Um, but the audio should be clean. Um, iCamper distributor in Victoria only. Yes, there are other iCamper distributors across Australia, but we are yeah, distributing for Patriot campers. So yeah. if you buy a camper trailer, you can buy an I yeah. iCamper from us. Let's whip around this side. I think we can probably talk about your, uh, the, the um, Recovery points as well while we're at the back. Oh yeah, recovery points. Yeah. So, so with every uh, with every camper trailer that we do, we have recovery points. Okay, so they're rated and they they're directly connected to the main chassis. Okay, so if you need to be recovered or recover people, they're what you need to to hitch to. 
The other great thing about the X1s is they have a accessories hitch. So if you want to take more than sort of two bikes on the top, if you want to take your rack, that you know there's uh, bike racks out there that work really well with this system. So you know the whole family can take their bikes and uh, go and do that sort of adventure style. Cool. All right. I think um, I think that's probably about it for trailers. Yeah. Yeah. We're probably done. What do you guys want to see next? You got three options: white, black, or sandy top. Put it in the comments. First one to comment. <laughs> that's where we're going. Waiting, waiting. Sandy, 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 Sandy. Sandy. Oh, black. black. Yep. All right. Well, let's go to the black. Sorry, guys. So I'm, gonna, I to I'm gonna leave that to last. Yeah. Let's grab Michael. Let's get Michael in um, and see what see what Michael's got to say. Uh, he's, he's selling. We'll wait for him to finish. Actually, on the way through, let's go and have a quick look at Patriot Supply. We might um, coming in. I might sign up. You're right. Keep, keep going. Free to go. Um, Patriot Supply, so we've got a whole new range of Patriot merchandise on sale this weekend. Um, so both Patriot Campers and Patriot Games. Kids fishing shirts, um, the new little blue ones, they are cute as yeah. for boys or girls. Um, heaps of long sleeve for the Melbourne, we've got some camo gear, which the twins actually got involved with the design with that one. Sarah yeah. handles all the designing of the, of the merch. Um, and... Actually, I forgot. Oh, he's got it on. Check it. New... I'm going to get undressed. It looks better on me than it does there, doesn't it? No, maybe not. Um, new Desert Ops. They actually just went up on the Patriot Supply um, website last night. I think they're pretty cool. Maybe need... Tommy reckons we need different colour pants and boots. Yeah, I reckon like a beige with the brown pants and the brown belt. That's going to go a lot better. I don't, but I think it looks good. I don't get that excited about it. So hats, stubby uh, coolers, key rings, um, tent peg kits. Aaron? What else we got? Actually, let's let me introduce you to Aaron. So Aaron heads up Patriot Supply uh, at the main office. So the whole website, uh, the procurement. He's actually the guy that actually takes the order and then goes out to the factory and packs it. So if you're missing anything in your box, that's the guy to blame. Sorry. All right. <laughs> what else have we got? Uh, storage boxes. Oh, these here. Whether you have a Patriot or not, I'm going to do the sales. I'm going to get real salesy here because this is one of my top three favourite products that we sell, honestly. What we do with our kids now is, and Sarah will vouch for this, when we go away, whether we're taking a trailer or not, Christian, Ashton and Mia get handed one of them. Actually, they keep them in their cupboard at home. They know that is all they are allowed to take now. If it does not fit inside that box, they do not take it on the trip, and it's been a game changer for us, eh? They're, they're all canvas. Um, they've got the little Patriot Supply logo. In the front, they've got a little name tag. They come with a name tag. The kids like decorate them and so you know whose is whose. Um, they've got a little divider in there. You can get rid of the divider. But the best thing is, even if you're using them, and we use them in our trailer for everything, obviously for clothes, groceries, and all the rest of it. But when you're done, let's say, for example, you're on a trip and you empty out whatever contents you got in there, they just pack down and you can chuck them anywhere you want in your trailer or your truck. That is a really cool bit of gear. And these... I, I can't believe how many of these we sell, to be honest with you. It's ridiculous. Normally, people who buy one or two, yeah. the next couple of weeks they come back and they'll buy another five or six. Like, it's crazy. Anyway, you, sorry, mate. I'll, yeah. I'll talk about it. Uh, the mesh mats are new. They just arrived in. So the ground mats are under the, uh, the trailers. So they're, uh, they're just coming through. And, yeah, the apparel, um, the wheels. Like tie gauges. Tie gauges, peak or tyre deflated. Uh, they're pretty cool. Yep, um, wheels. And obviously wheels. So let's have a quick chat about the wheels and then we'll move over to the truck. Uh, so wheels. Now we developed our own wheels, uh, engineering team in-house developed um, wheels predominantly for land cruisers. So with the GVMs that we're doing now, we needed a 1500 kilo rated wheel, but the main driver behind this is I wanted maximum legal offset for a 79, and they did not exist on the market. You could not buy a negative 25 uh, wheels for a 79 Cruiser. So that's why we developed these. The five stars actually represent the five points of the Patriot logo, so that's where the design kind of came from. And we wanted that kind of little bit retro sort of styling, you know. The wheels, I think wheels are starting to get a little bit too crazy with the machining, and I just don't really like the look of it. I like the simplicity of these sort of style wheels. Now we offer them for 200 series cruiser, 79 series cruiser, Ram 1500 wheels are now here. Yep. Maximum legal track in the Ram offset 
and we have some, we're working on some other models. And then obviously you've got your Zero 6 on, 30, 6 on 139s, which will fit most of your Jap uh, dual cabs, Hiluxes, Rangers, all the rest of it. So Patriot Supply wheels, peak oil wheels in bronze or in black. In black now. Yeah, so yep. black is is black available, are they uh, here? They're about a week away. They're about a week away. Yep. So there you go. Yep. So that's Aaron from Patriot Supply. Um, put a face to the name. Let's grab Michael. Let's go and have a look at the big black 2500. Thanks, mate. No Where is he? Where's Michael? Right there. Get in here, mate. You just take the best to last. <laughs> no, oh, 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 damn it. Damn it. You're the first. Okay, um, mate, give us a run through. We've brought down a Super Amp this year, 2500 Super Amp. How old's this one? So, this one, actually, Andy put his deposit down at this show last year. At the year. Melbourne show last yeah, year. So, um, he picked it up. And this is Andy's second truck? Yeah. Third truck. Second. So, so Andy's third third. just upgraded from a 200 series. So, he had a 200 series Super Tourer. Um, and he was. I think he was actually the first customer to buy a Ram Super Tour. He was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was at the Melbourne 4x4 when we launched it last year. Now, he's, where's he been? He's been everywhere in this thing, Yeah, mate. he literally it just got back from the Cape, so he's just got yeah. it detailed for us for the stands. So. And whoever detailed this truck, I'm going to give you a shout-out. If I knew your name, I'd give you a free plug because that is the best detailing job I've ever seen on a car. That thing looks better than when it actually left uh, our factory. He'd done a video on Fraser Island, so it's been to Fraser. Yep. He's been up to Cape York. He came past the factory a couple of weeks ago on his way back from the trip. There were pinstripes all up and down it. This car gets used for exactly what it was he built for. He uses his truck. So over to you, Michael. I'll read the questions out as they come. Let's give a couple of minute walk around the 2500. Cool. Not a yeah. problem at all. So obviously the 2500 is our big tow horse. So you got 6.9 tonne towing uh, off the pinto look at the rear. Otherwise four and a half off the standard towing. Um, they are big. They're a big, uh, big American yank tank as you'd like to call them. With a big yank tank, we've got the um, big TJ and bull bar on the front, the 16,000 pound winch in there as well. Obviously, there's a lot of weight to be pulling out if you do get this um, big big rig stuck. Actually, before before I lose, I've just got a really good comment come through. A guy called Sam Eels. Eels? Sam Eels? I think I've heard it. Can't pronounce it. I might have heard about him built, built, not bought. I don't even know what that means. That's that guy with the patrols, isn't it? Oh, who? We don't do, no. Patriot don't do patrols. No. Guess I'm the only person not at the show. Yes, Sam. You are the <laughs> only person you? not at the show. Where are you, dude? Everybody is here. You're the only one who's not here. Uh, maybe next year, I shouted out, I said to the, I said on, I've done a little thing with Sam Oles, by the way, guys. Sam's a really good mate of ours. Um, absolute legend. Mate, wish you were here. I really do wish you were here. I can't wait to see the comment that comes through. I shouted out and I said uh, in a video with Sam, a couple of weeks ago that I'm going to build a patrol. Oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. It was the worst thing you could have it done. It was the me. worst thing I should have, yeah. yeah. He has just been I almost hammered quit. since that video on the patrol that we're building. So I, I can't believe how many people want to chop dual cab shop patrols out there. And I think <laughs> what we should do, we should build a patrol. And if we do build a patrol, Sam, Jim Carner, we're going to have a race. That's what's going to happen. Do you reckon? Who builds the best one? Guys, what do you reckon? Should me and Sam Isles have a, have a patrol build off? If you want to see that happen, chuck it in the comments. <laughs> Keep going on the rear, mate. Um, so yeah, we've got them. We got the integrated tow points down the bottom there as well. We do put these on a two-inch lift, um, so they're two-inch lift and 35s um, with the GVM upgrade. So we actually take these to a 5.3 ton. Um, that gets you at a full build like this. You sort of end up with about 800 to a ton uh, worth of payload. Um, obviously, when they're standard, it is fairly slim. So you do need to drive the, uh, drive these on a truck license if you've got the full GVM upgrade. Um, yeah. What did this weigh in at though? This one when it left us was 4.2 tonnes. So 4.2, had... so this truck as you see it, loaded with all of this gear in it with the 5.3 GVM upgrade, you've got a tonne of payload on top of this, on top of what you see here, which is, it's, it's, a it's hardcore. It's... And then you can put 6.7 tonne on the back of the thing too. <laughs> so that's that's where the RAM comes into it. Yep. And that was that was the big, the big um, decision maker for the customer as well. He um, obviously was towing a caravan at the time um, and the 200 series for him was overweight, wasn't cutting it. Um, so it was a pretty, it was a, it was a, a instant uh, love affair for him to move into the Dodge Ram and he has been, he's been loving it ever since. Yep. Um, everyone sort of says the truck's too big to take places, you wouldn't drive it to the Cape, That's you wouldn't take it on the, you wouldn't take it on the sand. He's done it, we've done it. It's been through Dimensionally, the and I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but these are things that I know people are interested in. Dimensionally, this thing here is exactly the same as a chopped 200 series cruiser. Exactly the same. Yeah. Same length and exactly the same width. It's very, very deceiving. 
The thing that throws you off with the 2500 rim is the bonnet. bonnet height. That's that's what does it. That's what makes the truck look so dominating, you know? But you put a 200, a chop, and uh, and when I say chop, a chopped and stretched 650 mil extension, which is what we do with 200s, you put them side by side and then length, they're within like 100 millimeters yeah. of each other. Width, they're identical, exactly the same. So it's very, very deceiving. And for, for a big truck, and these are big girls, big, heavy trucks, the off-road performance of these are yeah. astounding. And unless you've driven one, you would not understand what you can do with these. We just, uh, Matt Green, I hope you're watching, dude. If you are, chuck it, um, let me know that you're there. Matt Green just drove pretty much exactly this same truck, exactly the same setup, over Hell's Revenge in Moab with me and Ronnie Dahl like a couple of months ago. That video is coming out on Ronnie's channel, I think next month. Wait till you see what we did with the Ram 2500. And if you've ever doubted the performance of these things, that's going to um, that's yeah. going to prove some points. There is nowhere you can't take it. Obviously, out of the box, we can legally fit the 35s. Um, even with the two-inch lift, you've still got miles of ground clearance comparing to uh, the other touring spec vehicles on the road. Um, 200 series is obviously a lot lower, same wheelbase. You drive over angles a lot less than what this is. Um, but yeah, so. I don't have the keys for this one. No, it doesn't matter. We don't need to go through the interior. Watch That's the build right. videos on, on Patriot Campus. Let's whip around. Maybe just talk about Peacor real quick. And let's talk about all the accessories he's got up the top yeah, there too. Yeah, definitely. Because he's got a lot going on there, right? So obviously the Peacor, um, we obviously everything's fitted out with our Peacor trays. Uh, Andy's opted for the uh, three-quarter canopy. So they come all inclusive of the stand-up fridge, full battery management system, inverters. You've got solar input, um, AC input, the whole lot. So it's a ready-to-go unit bolts on top of our canopy um, and ties into the central locking on the vehicle as well. So you unlock and lock the vehicle, it's easy, you're not getting keys out and everything to try and unlock it. The trays also have their um, built-in seven litre water tank. Um, so you've got additional water and obviously most of the time they're towing, so you've got more water as well in the trailer. So you've got more than enough there. Um, moving on. Accessories? Accessories, yeah. So, um, we can fit these obviously with the Rhino Rack Pioneer platforms, um, which you virtually can fit absolutely anything up there from bike racks, kayak carriers. And he's going to put the um, rooftop tents up there as well. Um, he didn't want to tow anything to the Cape, so he used the rooftop tent to, um, to sleep in of a night time and everything like that. So it's a nice, quick, easy setup for him. But the whole setup on the top of this is pretty cool. Yeah. He's got the Max Tracks up there. So how you cab rooftop tent, they're a really good thing. I actually really like them. Um, Max Truck's up there, he's got fishing rod holders up there. He's got, I think, 150 watt solar up there, Red Arc. Yeah, yeah. So, twin rhino platforms, and then obviously the super peg awning. So this this is the full yeah. self-sufficient it, kit. It is, it's got everything on it's it. It's got need. everything. I brushed past it too, but something we've done differently um, on the three quarter canopies from what we used to do with the half canopies with drop down fridge slides. Um, especially with the size of this truck and the height of the tray, the drop down fridge slide sort of was it was becoming a little bit difficult to work around. Yeah. Um, so having the stand-up Dometic fridge uh, in there makes it really easy to access those things on the go when you're on the road. You want to get a drink out, it's not a, not a pain in the butt to um, to get to. And they work, they've been working really well, hey? Yeah, mate, they've been, they've been working awesome. We've got another comment just come through. Um, Sean Peach, I prefer Tommy's haircut. <laughs> Sean's back at the office and meant to be working. Sean? Get, off, be, you, you get did, off YouTube, You did Dave. give him permission before to put his headphones in. Anyone that was working in the know. office. And that, but not, that's not to sit down and watch live YouTube videos. you got some work to do before we leave on Monday, mate. And Sean, <laughs> my haircut's better than Tommy's. <laughs> All right, Michael. <laughs> cheers, man. So we, we might um, actually come with me. Let's go over. All right, next truck. The special one. Which one are we going for? Nah, we'll leave the desert option to last. Okay. Okay. I think we'll leave, leave it to last. Sarah's here somewhere, and I'd probably like to bring Sarah in on this one because now I'm going to show you Sarah's new 1500 Ram. Well, it's actually not new. This we is built, my favorite. This is my favorite, my favorite car here. If I had to pick any of the trucks here as an all-purpose, all-round, going to drive it every day and still do my big trips, that is the truck that I would personally pick. The Ram 1500 is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. 2500 feels like a big truck when you drive it, you know? So when, when you're dialing the thing, um, the power is awesome, but it, the cab size is exactly the same as the 1500, but it just feels so much bigger yeah. Yeah. with the live axle in the front. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's torquey. It's, it's, it's just, a it's a truck, it is a truck. you know, you're driving a truck. This thing here, the 1500 Hemi. So I took this, um, we took this across the Simpson Desert, which is covered down in Patriot Games uh, season three uh, quite soon. 
when we took this one across the Simpson, we spent a lot of time in it. But prior to that, we were, I was driving this thing around on the highway. I'm doing eight liters per hundred. It was. We've changed that now with what's underneath the bonnet. But the standard Ram 1500 is more petrol, is more economical than a standard 200 series Land Cruiser. Like, and that is a fact. They've got a four cylinder cut out on them. So when you go into eco mode, like you're on the highway, it'll cut out uh, four cylinders. So you're only running on four. The fuel consumption is amazing. IFS in the front, so it handles, it steers. And to be perfectly honest with you, I, that's, I have a daily. I have yeah. a Graphite 1500 bog stock standard ram and that is my daily driver that's what i drive every day i can do everything in it chuck the kids pushies in the back um we can still we took it to fraser island over christmas um you can still do everything with them ram 1500 if you're looking for an all-rounder and when you talk about price so 2500 is coming in at like 150 grand here in australia for a laramie you're talking about 106 000, and don't quote me talk to your ram dealer you're talking about 106 000 for a 1500 laramie but a 1500 Express is $88,000. $88,000. It's, it's a lot of car for It money. is a lot of like, car for $88,000. Absolutely everything in them. Yeah, you got everything in them. So um, it's starting to, it's funny, it's putting, a, it's putting a fairly big dint in the diesel cult following. Yeah. The people, it, are, starting big to, time. people are starting to realize. They're, trying that, to, they're starting to revert back yep, to petrol. Yeah. The amount of 1500s you see on the road now, and everyone was hesitant. There. I remember when I bought the first 1500 in the workshop, yep. and all the boys were like, boo, boring. Yep. And now everybody's 1500 mad. They, they, when you spend some uh, time with them, they're just amazing. But anyway, let's let's get into the good stuff. So I'll show you it first up. I'll show you what we've done. <laughs> You're going straight into yeah, it. Yeah, let's you look. You know up. what? Now comes the good stuff. Now we're going to get to the real good stuff. You hold that. I'm going to freestyle this. If I can figure out where the bonnet catch is. Come in here and have a look at this. Get right in there and have a look at that little logo and what's sitting on top of that, that Hemi, Sarah's Hemi. So we've been working with Harrop uh, down here in Melbourne. If you don't know who, who Harrop is and you're into um, performance car scene, um, you're probably not as into it as you think you are. Harrop is a name synonymous with performance here in Australia. Uh, very, very heavily involved in supercars and supercar builds. I visited the factory yesterday, went down the Harrop factory for the first time. Um, now, Harrop are predominantly known for blowers, for building superchargers. And when, I think when the whole, you know, muscle car, V8, Commodore, Falcon, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff was big here a few years back, Harrop was the only go-to. So, look, I rang up Harrop a, a few months back, six months ago or something, and said, look, got this 1500 Hemi. I think it's going to be the next <laughs> big thing. What was the reaction when they said, I want to supercharge a Hemi it was awesome. Dodge Ram? The reaction was, and I didn't know them from a bar of soap, and they're like, yep, let's do it. Why not? Let's, let's develop it. So... Simultaneously, side by side, whilst we were developing this kit, Harrop have been doing it down here in Melbourne on their own 1500 Supercharge Hemi, which is here at the Melbourne 4x4 show. Um, I'm not going to lie, we had, a, we had a few struggles with it in the start, but only when it came down to tuning. Um, we had to send the ECU off to the States to get unlocked. Um, we were working with High Talk up on the Gold Coast um, to get the thing tuned up, but obviously being a prototype and being a new product, there was a lot of gremlins we had to work out. Um, it's been down here, it's finally sorted. Here's the big thing everybody's gonna to wanna to know. How much power is it making? Well, I don't think that the power, I was, if I had to be honest, I'd probably say I'm a little bit disappointed with the power output. And I'll tell you the reason why in a minute. So we've gone from, I don't know what the standard um, what the standard dyno number was. Uh, Steve, do you know? Have you what, got it? How much horsepower did this thing make? What do you got there? You got the, are you holding out on this? What's that? <laughs> what, you got there? What, what is that? He's brought his own cheat sheet. <laughs> That's Where good. did you get that from? Harry was just here. We should have pulled them in. We should have. Where are, where are they? Can you? Up top, up top. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get back like to what I was saying, run, Steve. So this is the uh, the actual kit. So this is now available from Harrop. You can buy this product from Harrop. Let's get back to what I was saying with power. So this thing here is making just on sort of 300 horsepower. But the biggest what what the supercharger kit has done, the number one noticeable thing that it's done is the torque increase. This thing's now sitting at 600 newton meters of torque. But here's the clincher, here's the best bit. It's only running four PSI. It's running four pounds of boost. That is five actually. <laughs> five pounds of boost, thanks Steve. Um, that's that's the best thing about it. So we're not putting the, the motor under excessive stress. We're not going stupid on fuel consumption. We're giving this thing like another, I don't know what it is in percentage, but a lot more torque. Yeah. But the power, 
yesterday the, we come out of the car wash. Put it this way: I come out of the car wash yesterday. The car was wet. Steve's having a chuckle because <laughs> he, he was in the back seat. We come out of the car wash here in Melbourne under the speed limit, and I put it into manual mode and hit the gas, and the thing just full sideways and just held a power slide out of the car park private on, on private property private on private property in road. Mexico. But the power that this thing makes is just, it's insane. And it's still a daily driver. You get the supercharger noise. But what I'd like to do, I'd like to really push this thing to the limits. I'd like to whip that motor out, put some pistons in the thing, and um, and pump the thing up, eight pounds, 10 pounds, so, and, sorry, and see what it can do. If I blow it up, Steve's gonna fix it for us anyway. The, the one I'd like to point out, the noticeable thing with the supercharger and coming from driving turbo cars, yep. the how smooth it is the whole All way through the, the way rev through range. The power band, so yeah. you don't get that, but the jerk sort of as it comes into boost. Yeah, there's, no, there's none of that. No, it is a smooth, yep. drivable car. It's yep. really nice. Yeah, so supercharger versus, tur versus turbo, obviously that's the advantage of a supercharger. Supercharger, You've got that. Um, you've got that power all the way through the rev range, obviously, because it's driven off the belt. It's not driven off the exhaust, which is waiting to build boost. So your boost is always there. You hit the pedal, and it's anywhere that you are in the rev range. It is so friggin' smooth, eh? yeah. And, you and can't, it just you can't get away from that. Whoop, and that noise. Yeah, the noise is awesome. And for a big truck like this, um, it's it's pretty impressive. On the highway, you jump on the throttle, and the thing just it just goes. It is amazing. So. I'm really happy with this. I'm happy with where we've uh, gone with it. The Harrop Supercharger kit is now available on our Super Tura builds um, through Patriot Campers. But if you have a, a Ram 1500, make sure you contact the guys at Harrop. Have a look at the Supercharger kit. I'm not sure what the retail price is going to come in at. Obviously, the development has just finished. I know they're launching it here this weekend. So we might see if we can get the information and find out what the actual kit's worth. Uh, and in the United States as well, I know Harrop's got plans for the US. So this kit should be available in the United States. Check out the website. Now let's have a quick um, let's have a quick walk around the 1500. We've got a full build series coming out on this car um, on Patriot Games Season Three. Again, launching in November, launching straight to YouTube this year as well, which is going to be awesome. We've got the Pcor front bar on there. That's a product that we developed, obviously, when we built this truck. There was no bull bar available. Uh, we have a very very strong tie with. JM, as you see over on the um, on the 2500, um, but there was just nothing available, no scope at that time to get that product into the market. So we went ahead and we built our own. Uh, TJM winch at the front. We got winch at the back. Massive recovery points. Uh, massive tubes. These are the new X-ray LEDs, uh, 220 LEDs. We were actually trialling these out on the Simpson Desert trip, and as usual, X-ray they, they just they just bring it out. Yeah, X-ray just bring it. It is there's turning no, the night time to daytime. There's, there's, no, there's nothing better. I say it in a thousand videos, you get what you pay for, you know? Yeah. You can buy light bars for a hundred bucks off eBay. You invest the money into something quality like this, like X-ray lights, you, you can't go wrong. You, you'd never regret it. So amazing to get a kit. Um, GME, and I, I'm, I'm starting to get a few comments about how much I'm harping on about XRS Connect. If you, <laughs> you do love it. If you don't have an XRS Connect in get your it. truck, you, there's something wrong with you. Like, you have to, ha you need to get one. You've got to get one. Trust me, another investment. Other, you'd never replace a CB radio, typically. You're just moving from car to car to car. XRS Connect, for those who don't know, and only available in Australia at the moment, as far as I know, not in the United States. Best part about it is you pull an app up on your phone, all of your mates log in, and you've got full communications Close on GPS to see where your mates are, even if they go out of range. And we used it up in Arnhem Land. Amazing bit of kit, so get on board, XRS Connect. Um, let's have a talk about all the other products that are fitted for the 1500. Got a two inch suspension lift. We're still working, we're still, uh, if I had to be honest with you, I'm not 100% happy with the way this thing's riding at the moment. It's good, but I think we can do it better. So we're still playing around with spring rates. We're working with King Springs uh, on the Gold Coast um, to get the spring rate right and the valving in the shocks right. So we're, we're almost there. Um, when a customer, obviously, now that we've done the development on it, the 1500 is now available as a Super Tura. So by the time that the first customer build comes through, we'll have that perfectly sorted. 35-inch uh, uh, Mickey Thompsons, obviously the P-Core rims like I spoke about. AEV snorkel, really good bit of kit. Um, really happy with that. Rhino rack uh, backbone with Pioneer platform on top. Same on all of our Super Tura builds. Um, you've got the same styling, same decals on the 1500 as you have on the 2500 um, so that's our, our super tourist sort of decals and then obviously the p-core tray michael 
my voice is hurting already. <laughs> tell, them, take back. tell them about the trade. <laughs> Give me a look at the comments. Um, the other thing to point out too, this is a fairly, um, a, almost a standard Super Tour for us as well. So aside from the roof rack um, and the additional lighting accessories, this is um, pretty much how you purchase the base package of the uh, 1500 from us. The p tray obviously is standard. Um, we've done this one just with the drop sides um, and the Douglas tracking on the inside for tying your loads down and everything. Just a really usable, this is a, probably the most usable car we've built. Yeah, definitely. Um, GVM, someone just asked about GVM. We're still working on it, on the 1500. Where are we at right now? Uh, we're going through, remember. We're going through axle loading. So the problem with the 1500, not nothing to do with chassis or anything like that, is the actual the axle load limits yeah. restricting it. So yeah. Um, but working, where, did, where did we get to? Working through that with um, 39, 3950, right? Yes. So it's currently they come out at 3600 yeah. um, from Ram trucks. So we, if we can get to 39, that'll give us the same about. We same got. Pace. We got. One of our good mates is working on a project right now for a 4495 for the 1500. Um, I think within the next probably four to six weeks, that will be available. So um, I won't say any more than that, just in case I get it wrong. <laughs> but the GVM upgrade, again, by the time this rolls through the production line, the 1500 Ram, we will 100% have GVM upgrade available for the Ram 1500. Yeah. So keep and watch this space. That's, that's going to be a pretty cool kit as well. Um, what else? Let's answer a couple of questions real quick before we move on. Um, quite a few comments in here about a Hilux. Yes, we'd love to build a Hilux Super Tura. Uh, the only reason we haven't is time constraints. It's the engineering team are just absolutely smacked. The production team is smacked as well. Um, we need to introduce a new product onto those guys like a hole in the head right now. I'll probably have, probably have staff walking out the door. <laughs> so yes, it will, it will come. Hilux will come. Um, After the patrol. After the patrol. <laughs> um, they want to see a six-wheel drive. Unfortunately, the six-wheel drive is not at this show. Uh, we did that last year. Do you see more American trucks moving into Australia older and newer? Do you think you and the people you work with will work with older trucks? Look, for us, we don't work on, on used trucks. It's just, it doesn't suit our business model. There is so many um, good workshops. That is what they do, i.e. TJM. Get to your local TJM. Through TJM, you can buy a PCOR tray, you can get bull bars fitted, you can do <laughs> whatever accessories you like. For us, we're a production facility. We're good at producing a single product and single options for that product, and we, we stay in our lane. That's, that's yeah. what we do. We will never get into uh, fitting four-wheel drive accessories. Uh, I shouldn't say never, but it's, it's just not in our business model at the moment. Uh, Mitsubishi model, definitely possible. A couple of comments coming through about Titan and uh, F-Trucks. I'm actually looking forward to getting my hand on an F-Truck, so yes, that is possible. Titan is definitely possible as well. Um, what else? Hilux, Hilux. Wow, there's a lot of Hilux. Yeah, Hilux is a big one. Um, how long's Patriot Camp has been going for? Patriots, we're in our sixth year. We just had our sixth birthday last month, um, which is pretty cool. Um, what else? You should put stacks on the 1500. I, saw, I wasn't going to say that to you. No? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big no. That's, that's not going to happen. Um, just order a hell crate, yes. <laughs> uh, just <laughs> a hellcat. Stop cat, reading the comments. A, a hellcat. Um, yeah, it, it'll it'll happen. But I've got I've got something else in mind for that. Um, overpriced. That's in the eye of the beholder, mate. Um, I, I think all of our customers wouldn't agree with you, but whatever. Um, how good are the 1500s on fuel? We just answered that question. I think that's probably about it for the 1500. 3500 Ram. Yes, we haven't built one yet. Um, we have we have it on our price list. So the customer, we just haven't had a customer order one. No. I think with the GVM now that we get on the 2500 with the coil spring at 5.3 ton, there's probably not a need for a 3500. No. And no. unless you were specifically using that truck for towing, i.e. a big caravan or a race car trailer or something like that, we would steer you in the direction of a coil truck, a 2500. I if you haven't even had inquiry. No. For the so, but 3500, yeah, not a drama. We can build, we can build these trucks in the 3500. Um, can you take the canopy off the tray? We're getting back to the 2500, 100%. That's what it was all about. I think that's probably about it for questions for now. We'll come back to questions in a minute. Who wants to see the Desert Ops? Is it time? A couple more things on the tray because we didn't get too far. Sorry, I'm talking. <coughs> well, He's taken over. I've got a habit of um, Just touching base back on that three-quarter canopy. So all of our canopies are removable. Um, with a few bolts, the wiring looms are plug and play as well. So you can take them off. Um, we have a, different, a couple of different setups the way you can set them up. Obviously, we've got the half canopies you can use. 
Um, we've got a few new products as well that are on the price list now. The bike, uh, the motorbike carriers. Yep. Um, yeah, motorbike carriers, that's a good one. The trophy uh, truck style wheel carriers that you can use with them. So we can do a side by side. Sorry, dude, I'm doing yeah. it again. <laughs> um, so we've got a, a couple of different ways that you can um, store your uh, spare tyres on the vehicle now if you're removing them, putting them back on um, often. The bike carriers are pretty cool. If you um, checked out the blue, um, the, the blue mini mega tour we done, he was actually the reason I suppose we started, we had to produce them um, as he's loaded motorbikes on the back of the tray and the tray length wasn't long enough to um, put them on. So we've got the, the mounts for those. Um, that's about wraps up probably everything from me now as P4 goes, as far as P4 goes. A few more questions come through. I'm going to attack the white elephant. <coughs> this is either going to get me in a lot of trouble or okay. not. Obviously you love TJM, but what are your thoughts on ARB? Do you know how often I get asked that question? Or opposite lock or Iron yeah. Man. It is, okay, I'll tell you why I'm so passionate about TJM and why we affiliate with TJM. TJM are visionary. They are a visionary company. And I like to think the Patriot Campers is exactly the same. We have a relationship with TJM like we do with all of our suppliers that they from day one have supported everything that we've done and they listen to us. They work with us, you know, on projects that we did like the Mega Tour when we built that bull bar. Um, having the relationship that I can build the Pecor bull bar without any sort of lashback from a company that sells bull bars because they obviously see the bigger picture. They have they are a visionary company. And the, again, the relationship that we have with everybody at TJM, why, why would I want to go anywhere else? I have nothing against any of the other brands. In fact, I own personally vehicles that have other brands of, of product on them. It's not, I'm not constrained or cuffed to, to use TJM gear, but it's that relationship that we have with TJM ensures the future success of what we do at Patriot Campers, like every supplier that we have. So there it is. The white elephant has been attacked. Was that? Was that? That good? was a. That was a good. That was a good. That's take. That's, that's and it. even even going back before the whole relationship with TJM started, you think about when you hit the cow yeah. with the two hundred series. Yep. The store owners, like everyone that's involved with TJM, they are always more than happy to help. Yep. Uh, I can travel anywhere in Australia for obvious reasons, anywhere in Australia, and get into trouble. And I'll have store owners of any TJM store meet yep. me at their workshop at three o'clock in the morning to keep me on the road. Yeah. What? Why? Why would I go anywhere else? Exactly. That's the rela relationship that we have. So there you go. Um, do a BT50 build. Yes. Do a Y62. Now, now we're talking. <laughs> it's happening. Okay. You know what? Before we head over, come over here and make these things. Come in here. This is Patriot Security. This is, <laughs> this is my personal bodyguard and his, and his gorgeous wife. Nadia and Rex, say hello to everyone. We're live on YouTube. Hi, hi. So, Nadia and Rex, how long have we been working together for? I've yeah. Three years? Yeah. So this is our finance team. Now, Nadia and Rex uh, come to all of the big shows with us. They handle all of our in-house in -house finance. These are the only finance people that we deal with. They're part of the Patriot family. Um, what, else, what else do we say? If, you, if you're looking for a deal, obviously the rates that these guys get are amazing, um, and you can feel free to challenge that. Um, and we're happy for people to do that. Yeah, and we're always, you know, trying to fit within the budget that you guys are looking for most definitely to get you across the line to get you into a K-Par, so, yeah. Yeah, and if you, um, yeah, and if you want to mess with me, you've got to deal with him. Yeah. Yeah. The security guard. Security guard. <laughs> so Nadia and Rex, finance is available here at the 4x4 show or outside of the 4x4 show. If you're looking at buying anything Patriot campers, whether it's a camper trailer, a truck, these are the two people you'll be talking to, to Nadia or Rex. Um, we'll refer you on to them and, and they'll hopefully get the deal across the line for you. As long as you've got a good credit history and you haven't done it. <laughs> All right. Wrapped up credit cards. Desert Ops, yeah, let's do cool it. Guys. Come on. I'm going to tease, sorry guys, I'm going to tease you one more time. Get in here, Graham. <laughs> get in here. Graham. Yes, mate. Camping Adventures, Melbourne distributor, Victoria, the first distributor that Patriot Campers ever put on. It's been a while, hasn't what's, it? What's the past few years been like for you? Yeah, it's been sensational. So it's been four years now. So four we years. Just, we just had four, four years. He's dealt with year. me for four years. That's that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had a lot of hair yeah. before I started this. You used so to have a ponytail. Don't get too close. Yeah. <laughs> used to have a ponytail. Um, Melbourne 4x4 show. 
Massive, yeah. I mean, it is it is a huge, huge show. I mean, Fridays will be busy. Saturday and Sunday will be absolutely smashed. It yep. won't be able to even walk on the stand, I think, is what we find most years. Yeah. So, so the weekends are pretty crazy. If, if you want to actually spend some time um, with anybody, I'll give you a tip at a 4 by 4 show, whether it's us or anyone else. Go on the weekdays, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Get down on a Friday or a Monday or a Thursday, depending on when the show's going. Yep. If you're genuinely interested and you want to spend some time with a product, any product, um, you want to get down during the weekday because Saturdays... And especially Sundays, they're just oh, made. Yeah, enough. it is. Yeah, just uh, so many people coming through. It's obviously three days, so you know, condensing a lot of, lot of, uh, and it's a big, one big show at the four wheel drive show of the year yep. here in Melbourne. So, yep. and we have people coming from all over the country come to yep. the show as well. So, yep. not just. And outside, show. obviously, yeah, outside of the the shows, Graham's got the showroom in in Caram Downs. Yep. Um, so always trailers on display down there. You can get his details through the website if you're down in Victoria. Um, yeah, no, come, and and come in the showroom, we can spend heaps of time, spend an hour, two hours just going through everything as well. So no pressure and uh, you get to, we can open and close the yep. trailers as well. So you get a really good experience. So definitely encourage people to come on down and we look forward to seeing you there. And come down to the show, get down. Thank you. No Thanks, mate. mate. Okay, here we go. There's it up. Here it is. <laughs> the comments. I'm actually, I'm going to try and read through the comments. Actually, I might put the past can um, Michael, come here, mate. Can you just shout out any of the comments as they come okay. through in between? Let's come around to the start. The first thing I'm going to actually run you through, I think I kind of touched on it um, in the video. We just launched the video for the Desert Ops, the 79 series. Why? That's that's going to be the number one question. Why? Um, why not? Why not? This, the, the Desert Ops is, it's kind of... SEMA last year, I started noticing a little bit of the retro sort of stuff coming through, you know, the old Chevys and, you know, Blazers and FJs and that sort of stuff over there. And I kind of got the idea to do a retro style truck. Now, Matt Black's been done to death. I'm sick of looking at it. Um, and there's so many design cues and even my own truck, the black truck, the black truck wasn't the black truck. I would respray it, but we're not going to touch it. After that video that we launched on YouTube, um, there's just there's no way I'm going to touch that car. So that's belongs to the twins now. It's actually parked in the garage at home. It will still be used on Patriot Games over the next whatever period of time. But when the boys get their license, that is their truck. So we wanted to do something completely different. Sandy Torp 79s uh, again is you know it's it's the same. They're they're absolutely everywhere, and I still love the Sandy Torp. Don't get me wrong. Hence the reason we did this. I think when when the first idea came up, uh, we were in the engineering office. And I said to the boys, let's build, um, let's build a retro trailer. Half of the team were like, crazy, you've lost, you've lost your mind. The other half of the team, and I'm going to give a big shout out here to our youngest engineer at Patriot Campus, Harrison. You are the man. He drives a 60 series cruiser. He is land cruiser mad. And when I verbalise my idea, and I'm like, this is what I want to do. I want to go sandy top. I want like orange and red kind of pinstripes. Blah blah blah. He literally whipped his phone out of his pocket and he had a photo in his phone and he goes, that's what you should build. And it was very, very, very similar to this. The design cues, colour scheme I'm talking about. I can't even remember what car it was on. Um, and I was just like, dude, that's, that's it. So Harrison, you absolutely nailed it. And then as usual, it just, the ideas started spinning and everyone started getting involved. Let's get the FJ40 badges. Let's get a retro grill. Why don't we put a sun visor in? I was online... I don't even know. I reckon two days straight trying to find parts for it. And then I got the, the idea, louvers. We need louvers. Like, we need, and I'll show you the louvers in a minute. So I found a company there in Adelaide that still hand make aluminium uh, louvers. So there's a lot of work going into this truck. But at the same time, again, we talked to everybody and, you know, all, all of our suppliers and this is what we're going to do. J-Max is like, dude, the four, the, the New 4495 kit, new chassis. Let's let's chuck one of them in there, and then it, then the, everything kind of starts snowballing from there. When we built the Mega Six, the Mega Six was just meant to be a six-wheel drive. It was going to be a white six-wheel drive Land Cruiser, and we all saw what happened there. When the when the wheels start spinning, and like I talked about the relationship with TJM before, that's the relationship we have with everyone. Um, everybody just jumps on board, and it's amazing. So let's have a look around. Any questions? Yeah, Any got... questions on that, guys? Real quick. We got one. You should do the 40 series Land Cruiser in a Desert Ops build. Okay, Sarah's FJ43. Again, I've got heaps of comments come through this week, and I can't believe people remember that. That was two years ago on Christmas. I posted a video giving, I gave my wife a 1963 FJ43 original running Land Cruiser. 
we found in a barn in outback New South Wales for Christmas two years ago. I haven't, we haven't had the opportunity to build it yet. The first idea for that was we were going to do a full resto mod on it, VDJ, coils, use the body off it. But when we got the car into the workshop and we really started looking into it, the car's too good. The frame is perfect on it. The body is perfect. Like I'm talking, there's like three dings in the body of this thing that need to be removed. And there is just no way that you could possibly destroy that car. So look, we will do a resto mod FJ at some stage. Series 43, um, guys, again, it's like all of the projects. We've got a thousand things going on, time. But it's, that's probably one of the ones that I will get Sarah involved and Mia and the twins, and as a family, I think we'll build that car. This is a um, this is a good one. Single cab seventy nine series. Can we do one? Yes. Yes. Yep. Single cab seventy nine series. Um, we've built two now, so we've done we've only done two, right? Yep, two. Two Pecor trays. Um, one is at TJM Caratha, um, which he's coming down today. Is yeah, he not? he's to, to today or tomorrow. So, so he'll TJM in. Caratha have built a uh, a seventy nine. So jump onto their Instagram page, have a look, and we did another one for a customer. So seventy nine single cab, no problems. We've just never had the right customer to build a 79 single cab Super Tourer. So if you want a 79 Super Cab, um, 79 single cab Super Tourer, contact Michael directly. I'll tell you right now, happy to build it. I want to build one. Yeah. Yep. And pricing is going to be pretty much spot pricing. On dual yeah. Cab. Yeah. Pricing is going to be very similar to a dual cab. Um. What have we got? So someone said, "Cut your beard off, bro." Newbie Ninja. I'm not, I'm not even going to respond no, to that. No, that was harsh. Can I, can I be honest in this video and say I'm really ready to lose the beard? Though? Should I lose the beard? But I think we need to do it for a, we need to do it for a cause. Yes. Prior to Patriot campers kind of blowing up, the beard used to come and go whenever I wanted. Like I'd come home on a Friday afternoon and I would literally from this, I'd just shave it off and then grow it back over the next sort of six months. I feel like I can't do that anymore. But anyway, maybe. No, everyone's saying no, don't lose the beard. I know. No, it's it like... is the Patriot face. That means if you do it, I'll have to do it. You do you know, know that nobody, like at, nobody at Patriot ever used to have a beard? Now we only employ people with beards. Yeah. You come and work at Patriot, even the girls are running around with beards now. Yeah. Like it's everyone's part, got a beard. It's part of the uniform. It's part of the uniform. You've got RM's boots, RM's belt, and a beard. Tommy, and then you're, you're Patriot through Tommy's through. on his uh, third and final warning. He's yep. got, yeah. After the show, he has to grow. Tommy's he's, he's way too gorgeous for a beard, I think. Oh, uh, that's about more. That's about all. We've that's got about so it. Far. Okay, let's have a look around. So, 79 series uh, dual cap GXL in Sandy Tor. Uh, couple. How long ago did we build the first Sandy Tor? Ah, oh, it was beginning of two years. 2017. Two years. We custom ordered from Toyota Japan a Sandy Tor. 79 dual cab cruiser they weren't you couldn't buy them in australia actually the guy credit where credit's due it was jason at uh, jmax he was the guy that put me onto sandy top because he did it he ordered one out of the factory that car arrived i think he waited about four or five months for his his and honestly my first reaction was yuck that is yuck no way i wouldn't do it suits the old cruisers but not on a new cruiser after he built his and we worked with him on the first six wheel drive p-core tray for him I was just like, yeah, dude, I need one. So I custom ordered one a couple of years back and we built, which, what build was that? Was that the Mini Meg? The, the first Sandy Tor was the Mini Mega, yeah. It was the Mini Mega. The Mini yeah. Mega with the hand pinstriping, that was the first 79 uh, Sandy Tor. Now they're, you, you, again, you know, it's kind of- We've got eight in this. <laughs> we've got eight coming up in Sandy Tor. Eight? Okay, so we've got eight 79 series cruises. Being there. Sandy Tor, every single Four. one. Okay. Um, so we've got, um, where was I? You just threw me off. Eight Sandy Torps? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but they all want Sandy Torps. So everybody wants Sandy Torp now? Yeah, which means change. Any, any of those customers, Desert Ops, go Desert Ops. So, um, I lost where I was. What was I saying? Um, this is the problem with live. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's skip past that. So we've gone with another uh, Sandy Torp dual cab uh, GXL, like I said before. Uh, Jason from J-Max got involved with this one. This is the first 4495 kit that we've done. So we do a lot of coil conversion uh, 79s, right? And that's that's a given. We've been doing them for close to four years now. I think we've been doing coil conversions. But after Jason at J-Max developed the six-wheel drive kit, the six-wheel drive was a full fabricated chassis. Whereas if you go a coil conversion from J-Max, it simply bolts in. You remove all the spring stuff. It comes with a cradle and the cradle bolts in. And, and makes the coil conversion. This one here has a full fabricated chassis. So we dock at the chassis rails here. It includes a 300 millimeter extension, which you can see here. 
Generally speaking, on a 79, a standard body 79, the wheel arch is here. That's the actual mud guard, so your wheel sits in here. So you've got 300 millimeters in the suspension, but what this kit does over a, a standard coil conversion is you've got a purpose-built chassis. So your five link is designed in the back of this thing, um, not around the factory frame, but specifically the geometry is perfect for the actual conversion, if that makes sense. So the big advantage of this one here is your GVM upgrade. Now everybody's going wild over GVM upgrades on a um, on 79 series cruisers. I'm going to throw. I'm going to attack another white elephant. If you're constantly towing big loads, I don't think a 79 is the right truck for you. Yeah, I honestly, I, they're just not built for it. You know, the, the drive line and the power, they're just not built to handle it. If you're if you're using that 79 as a daily or your tradie truck and you you know you, you go away with your caravan on trips once a year or your weekends or whatever perfect that's exactly what it's for but if you're specifically buying a truck to go and do a big lap 12 months around australia towing your three and a half tons or over i think you're better off with the 2500 ram the drive line is built exactly for that so that's that's my two cents worth now the 4495 uh, GVM obviously gives you that big advantage. You've got a four ton tow on this thing, and you can also run a 35 inch tire with this kit. So it's pretty much, and obviously track correction in the back. So for our, our guys in the States that might not know, 79 series track in the front and the back are different. They're wider in the front than they are in the back. That's why you hear a lot about um, track conversions for 79 series cruisers. So like I was saying, this kit from J Max. Is, gives you the advantage of everything that you want from a 79 is here in one package. And that's that's the best part about it. Any questions on that? Got nothing yet. I was surprised. I thought you were going to get a whole heap of 79 hay. No, the GVM I th look, I can, I can say it because I build 79s. Yeah. I don't think it's, you know, it's, people can't take that as me hating on 79s because I'm probably one guy in the country that loves 79. So I've helped build a 79 series market. The black truck, the Mega 6, all the super series that we build. Bringing the Desert Ops back down, you know, I'm 79 fanatic, yeah? So, anyway, you can't hate on me from that. Justin is on my team when the zombie apocalypse is. Yes, <laughs> yes. Zombie apocalypse truck from Patriot is coming. Um, peak or tray, you can see this thing is also sitting on a four inch lift. It's up on jack stands, um, but it's huge. Realistically, if you were going to use this for a tradie truck, or you were going to, you want to carry dirt bikes and that sort of stuff, I wouldn't recommend going a four inch lift either. You're asking to break a leg or something when you when you're loading it. Um, what else can we talk about? The interior. Let's here, come and check this out. So we haven't done a lot, but we've done enough. Yeah. Sheepskins remove the headrests. Um, we've got some some really ugly coloured floor mats. Fluffy dice. Um, you know, ultimate bog boy machine. I can say it on YouTube live, but I probably shouldn't say it in the YouTube video. And I, co I cop that my whole life, so I can say it anyway. Um, sheepskins in the back. If you actually want to get in there, have a look at the louvers. All handmade um, down in Adelaide. And I can't remember the company's name. Otherwise, I'd, I'd tell you who it is. Because he's, he's such a cool dude. This is the first 79 that he's done. We made up a paper template for him. Um, and they got that all sorted out. So the whole interior just fits the styling of this truck. And yes, guys, the headrest can go back in there. So it is um, the truck is legal. Yeah, we got a lot of really silly comments on YouTube that, oh, you can't take the headrests out, they're illegal. Well, you can slide them back in, you know? It's not like we've deleted them. Um, so again, you can see the, the vinyl decals. Oh, let me show you something really, really cool in this truck. This is brand new for us as well. Come through here. Why, why has Steve got a smile on his face over there? Steve's beard looks better. Oh, there's Sarah's back too. Hi. Hey. We're gonna get Sarah in here in a minute. Okay, check this out. PWR Top Mount Cooler. This is a brand new product. We actually went up to the launch at PWR when they launched this a few months back. Um, it's a direct bolt-on replacement cooler. You can get it with thermos. We didn't put thermos on this one because obviously we wanted to showcase the cooler. We might leave the bonnet up. Uh, PWR, great Australian company. They build something like there's 14 Formula One car teams across the world. They do all the cooling systems for 12 or 13 of those teams. So I've been up in the factory and held, you know, the, the coolers out of the Ferrari Formula One cars and that's what these guys do predominantly. They do NASCAR, they do 
WRC, that's their main part of their business. So when they get involved in technology like this, you know it's going to be premium. The big thing for PWR is they're very, very conservative with um, their, their, their cooler system that they've developed. They're not out there advertising that you're going to pick up 20 kilowatts and, you know, given all that sort of BS like a lot of companies do, it's, the, it's efficiency, you know. Keeping the inlet temperatures down, obviously your performance goes up without harping on about it. Um, and if you're towing, you're running a big uh, weight or even for your general driving, your engine's going to work a lot better. Um, and couple that with the torque it system that we have in this truck. So we have torque it exhaust, uh, DPF back, and then we've got uh, torque it pedal torque and ECU. Um, this thing pulls ass. It's also got a 1300 pound MPC clutch in it as well, which MPC clutches, they're, they're the only clutch that we use. We were put onto them by GSL and um, we've just never changed. You know, We put an MPC in the black truck when we built it four years ago and um, it's awesome, awesome bit of gear. So it's just one of those products, why would you change? We got a lot of hate on the snorkel too. Hey, we got a lot of hate on the snorkel. Like, I can't believe you guys built this truck and left the snorkel on. But tell me that doesn't suit the style of the truck. And yes, we would generally put an air tech on everything, but we wanted to keep um, with the, the theming of the truck. So that's why we kept um, kept the snorkel on. What else? What else do you want to say? You still got comments going? Guys, put in the comments. What else do you want to say? Anything specific on the Desert Ops? Someone's asking why there was cruisers in our car park with V6 badges. Why, there's, why are there Land Cruisers in the Patriot car park with V6 badges? Because we're building V6 cruisers. Do we um, do we tell everyone what we're doing or not? Maybe a hint. A hint? Yeah. If you're in the UAE, you can buy a Patriot Super Tour now. Yeah? That's probably about all we'll give you. So anybody who's watching us, um, from the UAE or surrounding countries, uh, we have a vehicle coming for you and it's launching very, very soon. And it's friggin' awesome. It is really, really cool. What else? Comments, that's about it. I think most people are tuned out. This has probably gone too long. How long have we gone for? Uh, over an hour. We're over an hour. Okay. Come with me before we go. We're going to find uh, Michael. Keep rolling with me. I can see a little feet. Come with me. Let's go get the star of the shark. <laughs> Sarah's getting a little bit shy of the camera. Oh, you're just so good at it. We'll just leave it for you. Well, I have to be because I've got to do it for both of us. <laughs> yes. Like she was there for the intro and then... Did it? Go on. I'm really just, good at that. I'm just really gone. on. Um, Melbourne 4x4. What's the 4x4 show? We're about to close out. We've been through everything and it's been well over an hour. Yeah, this has gone for a very long time. He can talk. He can talk. When I get... Look, it's not... I feel like I need to explain myself. You can't get a word in around Justin. I can't. I, I, I can't stop when it comes to. I'm so proud. I know. I'm so proud of all of this gear. I'm so proud of my whole team. What we do, what we bring to the four x four show. It's not. When you start me talking about the stuff that I'm passionate about, I can't stop. Yes. Like and when you talk about me. Like when I talk about Sarah, I just get. <laughs> get so emotional. I get so emotional. I can't stop. No, look, it's look. We we obviously we love what we do. Yes. We wouldn't change it. We obviously we stuffed up this weekend. Why did we stuff up? Not bringing the monkeys. I know. Yeah, we stuffed up. This is the first four by Melbourne four by four we did without. They were pretty devastated that they couldn't come. So. Yeah, we got a big trip coming up though in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be away from home for probably the longest time we've been away from home, and we're taking the kids with us. Um, we get a lot a of one. we get a lot of comments about do your kids ever go to school? Yes, they do go to school, but. Big shout out to our kids' school. We're not going to say who it is. You know who you are. The whole team there at the kids' school. Really supportive. Really yeah. supportive of what we do. They understand what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve with the kids. Um, yeah, that was the pro uh, probably the only muck up for this weekend. Yeah. Um, typically speaking, come on, I need, you, I need you to get involved. Oh, but you I need you to talk. If you want it really good, I'll just be over here. <laughs> Melbourne? Melbourne, cold. Yep. Cold. Melbourne show. Melbourne show. This is compared our, to all the others. This is our best one. Brisbane and Melbourne four by four show. They are the biggest for us yep. in the year. Um, yeah. Everyone comes out. Everyone wants to come to this show, don't they? Yeah. Every, everyone at work. Melbourne's. Is like, Can I go? Everyone at work, and you know what? Well, I wish we could bring the whole team down here. I think yeah. there's 12 of us here this weekend. 
we try and mix it up every year and bring different staff down. Yeah. Um, sometimes it happens that the same staff do get to come down. We wish we could bring all of them. Unfortunately, someone's got to pay for this stuff, which is <laughs> which is the people that are back at the at the office working. But yeah, look, Melbourne four x four for us is um, is always just absolutely amazing. Got any comments there? Any questions that need answered before we check out? If your dad doesn't have a beard, you got two mums. <laughs> is, is that the one? Actually, I did see start. one that said get Which rid one? of the beard. Which uh, one? Who? Oh. <laughs> been here from the start, David Lucas. David Lucas, been here from the start, not too long. Loved it. Good on you, David. My voice hurts. But um, <laughs> before we do go, you're coming with me. We're doing this together. Come over here because I'm, I, I, I really can't, I can't close out this video. You see people start coming through the door now. Yeah. Um, I can't close out this video without um, giving a shout out to these guys as well. So this year for the 4x4 show, typically speaking, we've been up in the top top 10, yes. right? And we've been trying to get down here next to our best friends, I suppose, in the industry, TJM. And this year we've done it. We're right, right next door. Right next door. So previous years, um, we're running, I'm running up and down. Sarah's running up and down. It's like a big family here at TJM as well. TJM have all of the brands, everything that we use on the show. You can see, look, even from right here where I'm standing, you can see MSA's there, Rhino Rack's here, GME. Go there and get your XRS Connect. Do it. And if you don't, I'll, I'll throw it out there. If you don't like it, if it's not worth it, send it to me and I'll buy it off you. <laughs> How's that for a plug? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand why you wouldn't have one. You need to have one. Um, but you can see all everybody who's affiliated with Patriot Games, Patriot Campers are all here on the TJM stand. And it's like a big, big family here. So it's just absolutely awesome. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm pretty sure you've covered everything. That's our first YouTube live. Um, I, I hope it went all right. I hope we kept everyone's attention. I hope you love the gear um, here at the show as much as we do. Thank you to all of our fans, everybody who supports the brand. And I'm talking from Patriot Campus customers to our team back at the shop, yeah. all the staff that are down here, and the people who come out over the weekend to see us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really, it's surreal, eh? It is. It is. So, guys, thank you very much. First YouTube Live. I think we'll probably do a little bit more of them. Keep an eye on the Instagram page over the weekend, too. Yeah. So we'll keep the post going. We'll keep the Insta stories going. We better go and do some work. And do some work, yes. Like I said, we probably need to pay for this because it looks expensive. Yes, let's go sell. Thanks, guys. <laughs> See ya. See ya.